those with their ear to the tabletop may have heard the rumblings of thunder and sensed the static in the air as Sigmar and his lightning strike warriors gear up for the third edition of Warhammer Age of Sigmar. But what if the charms of this titan of the tabletop have fallen on deaf ears? What if the inspiration to start playing has only just struck? What if something else lightning-y that I, I haven't thought of yet. What if I just list you 10 things you need to know before getting into Warhammer and be done with it? Well, thankfully, we've been sponsored to produce this video and gifted an extremist starter set plus paints and tools in order to make it by the benevolent Warhammer gods, which from reading up on the lore is very unlike them. We're much more likely to end up with extra eyes or our entire arse on our outside. Number one. What is Warhammer? Warhammer is a tabletop game where opposing generals, usually two, filled forces of miniatures to simulate grand battles in a never-ending fantasy war across the realms using a tape measure, lots of six-sided dice, a spark of tactical genius, and a really healthy dose of luck. But the job of a general isn't just to man the tape measure, it's also to run the HR department, construction division, and artisans guild. Which is to say that Warhammer is a full-blown hobby where you collect, build, and lovingly paint your miniatures before sending them forth to beat eight realms of hell out of each other. A game may only take one to two hours to complete, but the hobby is something that will hungrily devour your free time. Number two, what is Age of Sigmar? Long, long ago in the past, 2014, there was an old world. This was the land of Warhammer Fantasy, a rank-and-file tabletop miniatures game that had been created way back in 1983, and that world it died, because a huge storyline known as the End Times saw the forces of the four Chaos Gods, Nurgle, the gassy one, Khorne, the angry one, Slanesh, the sexy one, and Seech, and Seech, Seech, the unpronounceable one, combine their might and destroy the entire world, creating the brand new, streamlined game Age of Sigmar in the process. Plunged into the void of space with naught but the burning core of his old world to cling onto, Sigmar, the god of men who like hammers, aka dads, eventually found his way to the mortal realms which had been formed from the energy of the old world. Here, he helped mortals to thrive and met with other gods who had also survived the sundering. But the chaos gods continued to whisper sweet nothings into the mortals' ears, corrupting those in search of a shortcut to power, who wanted access to magics, or for some reason desperately wanted to wear all of their guts on the outside to each their own. So Sigmar created the Stormcast Eternals, golden armoured souls who died fighting chaos, brought back to serve once more, and repeatedly reforged to fight another day should they fall in battle again. So now the Stormcast and the forces of order battle the other grand alliances of chaos, death, and destruction over the fate of the realms. Number three. What's new in 3rd edition? Age of Sigmar's 3rd edition continues the process of refining and evolving the game of AOS while also giving lore junkies even more story to delve into. First and foremost, 3rd edition brings the forces of destruction smack bang wallop to the centre as the deity Kragnos, the living earthquake, escapes confinement to rampage across the lands with greenskins, ogres, and towering gargants in tow. And all of this juicy, crunchy lore stuff is covered in the updated core book, which also revamps a slew of rules for the game. Now, the focus has been on making things simple and easy to understand while keeping the fun cranked up to the maximum possible level, like the rules for the new monstrous rampages, which allow your big old beasties to stage titanic jewels, smash scenery to rubble, and stomp opposing troops into a fine paste. Third edition also brings with it updated rules for some armies, which will inevitably bring with it new miniatures to build and paint and new tactics to deploy in battle. We've already met the cruel boys Uruk clan, the stinkiest green skinned guy since Oscar the Grouch. These swamp dwelling battle bogans are set to star in the updated Uruk war clan's battle tome, while the Stormcast Eternals are also getting a brand new third edition book too. Number four, how do I get started? Getting started with a hobby like AOS can feel like a daunting task. Their story, rules and skills all to learn at once, so the best place to begin is always to think about which aspects of this hobby appeal to you the most. If it's building and painting and you're not so fussed on playing, then browse the selection of models online or in store, pick up the ones that speak to you and just have at it. More on both building and painting in a mo. But if you think you'd get a kick out of outmaneuvering an opponent on the field of battle, then you're best off getting hold of the rules. The aforementioned core book not only contains handily numbered sections on every single rule you need to wage glory glorious widow warfare, but it is also packed full of lore, amazing artwork, painting guides, glossy photos, and priceless inspiration for where the hobby might take you. But even if you're a toe dipper rather than a diver,
the inner, you can get hold of the full rule set on the Games Workshop website, along with all of the rules for the individual units for free. Zero dinero. But if you just want an extremely easy way in, then a box starter set like the more paired back Warrior, Harbinger and Extremis versions is a great jumping in point. It provides you with two forces, Stormcast and Cruel Boys, to build, paint and battle, plus rules, dice, range rulers, a gaming mat and even terrain. These sets are designed to ease you into every single aspect of the hobby and hopefully make a convert out of you. Because you're also going to get a great kickstart to either a Stormcast or Auric Force come the end of it. Number 5. How do I choose an army? Now, for those of us who suffer from choice paralysis, this is the real kicker, because Age of Sigmar is a game chock full of characterful, enticing armies. None more enticing than the Hedonites of Sunesh. Hello, Daddy. But still making that decision feels like it cannot be taken lightly. Fortunately, there are so many ways to make that choice easier. The first stop is always to check out the models. These are some of the nicest models of any game out there. And if none of these catch your eye, then you are dead inside. And if you are dead inside, there's an alliance for that. Because that's another way to narrow things down. Does fielding the forces of order, chaos, death or destruction speak to you? And if so, you can head on over to ageofsigmar.com for full backgrounds on which armies comprise which alliance. For instance, order ranges from naked angry gingers, murder god worshipping half lady half snake people, all lizard people, and soul stealing fish elves who bring crabs to battle. And if that is order, I would hate to see what chaos looks like. Actually, that's a lie. Editor, show me, show me chaos. Oh. I know what I'm getting for Christmas. Something else to think about is the style of play that you're into. Do you want to chop things into bits in melee combat because corn is your guy? Do you want to overwhelm them with otherworldly magic because then it's siege? Or do you want to bog them down in a mire of writhing rodent bodies, you absolute sicko? Because then it's the Ratmen of Skaven for you, you filthy dirty rat. Ultimately, the choice is likely going to be some marriage of all of these things. Then it's time to grab yourself a copy of the army-specific battle tome, which is packed with history, narrative, rules and inspiration for creating your army, and then start buying models. Often, the best bet is one of these start collecting boxes, which is a great way to get a few units at a reasonable price. Number 6. How do I assemble my miniatures? So once you picked up some minis, it's time to put them together. Now, Warhammer figures come disassembled on plastic sprues and need to be cut free before they can be cleaned up and glued. Before you get hacking away though, here's some handy tools that you might need. A cutting mat to protect your surfaces, hobby snips for snipping, a mold line remover, a hobby knife for knifing, and plastic glue. Once you've got your kit together, another key element to think about is your lighting, because the last thing you want to be doing when working with small parts and sharp knives is to be bumbling about in the dark because that is a recipe for one less finger. So something bright and cold coloured rather than your more amber bulbs is going to give you the best view of what you're doing at all times. Your model kits generally come with manuals too which will help you to navigate the mountain of sprue so just look for the relevant numbered pieces and follow along snipping parts free from the plastic with your hobby clippers. With all your bits cut out it's time to clean them up as rogue bits of plastic are often left where the clippers weren't quite flush with the model. This is where the hobby knife or the mold line remover can come in you just use them to gently scrape off the excess. With your bits cleaned, it's time to consult the manual to see how things fit together. Just plop a little dollop of plastic glue on all the connecting bits. The glue forms a really strong bond, so you do not need loads. Then you just press them together, holding for a couple of seconds to let the glue work its magic. Once the model is good and stuck together, you can give it a once over with the mold line remover to tidy up some of those joints. And you can also check out the assembling videos on ageofsigmar.com where you can also find handy guides for Number seven, what's the best way to paint my miniatures? The late great painter Bob Ross reckoned that with enough practice you could paint the Mona Lisa with a two inch brush. Which is all well and good, but how does that help me paint what this little fella is slopping out of his cup? To paint your models in AOS you're going to need a few things. A selection of brushes, some paints, an undercoat spray, a palette, a bowl of clean water. There's also a brand new paints and tools set for 3rd edition which gives you some assembly gear as well as everything you need to start some basic painting. The next thing to do is decide the colour scheme for your army. The battle tones for each army list specific law relevant regalia for the different factions of your forces, but you can feel free to just do whatever you like. These are your models, I'm not your dad. Instagram is also a great place to mine for some inspiration, while Warhammer's YouTube channel is full of useful tips for each individual army. 
money. Then it is all about layers with your paint. You want a prime layer that gives you a nice even coat of paint for subsequent layers to stick to. This could be brushed or sprayed on. If you're spraying, make sure to do it somewhere well ventilated, like outside. And a little bit of card to blue tack your models to can really help keep things even. Next up, base coat the distinct areas with the primary colors of your scheme. Then use a wash, which will run into all the recesses in the model, giving them some definition and bringing out the details. Then it's highlights or dry brushing to give it even more depth. But it is well worth watching YouTube videos on both, as both skills take a bit of getting used to. One final thing to consider is what are you going to do with your base? Because a bit of PVA and grass flock is really going to give you that battlefield look, but even some grit from your drive and paint is better than nothing. Number eight. How do I set up a game of Age of Sigmar? Once you've got your minis painted up and you're happy with them, it's time to send them out into battle to bring you glory and likely die. But then again, they're only skeletons, so they're technically already dead. The first thing you need is an opponent. Some sort of friend or family member will do, and if they're already into the game, that is all the better because they can be your sensei. But if your friends aren't feeling it, then try hitting up your local Warhammer store as they run regular gameplay events throughout the week, or you can check in with independent hobby shops near you as many run wargaming days that you could attend. With an opponent secured, you're going to need your minis, lots of six-sided dice, and something to measure with, and also some way of keeping track of the rules just in case you don't have a photographic memory, be it the core book, an app, battle tomes, or war scrolls for your units. And for this reason, the Extremis box is a fantastic place to start, as it provides you with two armies, dice, a ruler, the core rules, and a board to play it all on. And if you're dead fancy, some people even opt for special battle mats to play on. There's a battle mat in Extremis, which also comes with some terrain. Number nine. How how do I play a game of Age of Sigmar? With your gaming necessities in tow and an opponent on board, the next thing to do is decide which of the three ways to play you'll opt for. The holy trinity of AOS gameplay is open, narrative, and matched. Open is the fun-focused free-for-all one, which gives you a recommended board size and an army points total made up of the in-game value of individual units. But you can kind of fill out your force however you like to meet that total. Narrative play is the one that's had the biggest overhaul in 3rd edition and sees you taking part in a campaign known as Path the glory, which lets your forces grow over time, build a stronghold, gain new territory, and carry the burdens of previous fights with them as battle scars. This one could be a lot of fun if you want story hooks between each ruck. Match play is the big one for much of the player base and aims to keep things balanced for both forces. Players select a battle pack from the core rulebook or from the general's handbook, which gives you a points limit for your army and unit limits to meet. It adds in certain restrictions and also dictates the size of the board. Battle packs also include battle plans, which tell you how to set up the battlefield, deploy your armies, and the conditions of victory. We're not going to go granular on the actual rules of the game, as that would take a whole nother video. Plus, they're also out there for free online, so you could just go give them a read. Number 10. What comes next? Once you've got hold of a small painted force and you've got a few games under your belt, it's time to think about what you get up to now. Hopefully you enjoyed the hobbying process, so you're likely thinking about picking up some new models to grow your current force, as it's always best to start small and expand slowly rather than stare down this huge pile of dismantled sprues. So think about which units speak to you or what you felt your army was missing on the battlefield and go from there. If you found that painting was your jam, maybe you just want to try your your hand at some showpieces and even eventually enter some competitions. The beauty of the hobby is that you can just take part in whichever bits of it you want and you don't have to be a master at all of it. I, for instance, am a master of none of it. You can also read more lore in the Black Library books. Keep up to date via sites like Warhammer Community. You can subscribe to White Dwarf Magazine, which I have very fond memories of reading during my school years. There's also a bunch of other games out there set in the Age of Sigmar universe, like Underworlds or Warcry. These are smaller in scale and introduce things like deck building into the mix, but the brilliant thing is that all of the models can be used in Age of Sigmar 2, because that is bang for your buck. The fantastic thing about Warhammer as a hobby, it can be as much or as little as you want it to be. It can be a casual thing to tinker away at in the evenings or a sprawling, months-long build to weekend-long campaigns. It is your choice. Here's hoping that helped answer some of your pressing questions about getting into Warhammer Age of Sigmar. If you're new to the channel, why not subscribe for more board game silliness by the dice tray load and click the video on screen now to hop right in to another episode. Bye, get on board!